Happy hump day, everybody. It's Wednesday. Uh, we're doing our study of Mark, Pastor Rob here. I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for everybody who's liked and subscribed. Please continue to do so. Thank you so much for the for helping out the channel. We're now up over 155,000 views. It's exciting. Um, and uh, getting some more feedback, some comments, and uh, anything I can help with anytime, let me know. Uh, we're continuing our study in Mark today, and we will be in Mark chapter 8. It's another mass feeding. Very interesting. We get to compare. This is called the feeding of the 4,000. Again, a horrible title because it's only counting men, and Matthew will point that out in Matthew 15. So the two cover the same story, Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 8. So it's interesting, and we get to compare then the feeding of the 4,000 plus women and children with the 5,000 plus women and children. Now, Mark doesn't say that, Matt, as you know before. Matthew does. So we're going to go through the feeding of the 4,000, only covered in uh, Mark and Matthew. Uh, and so let's go ahead and begin. So <clears throat> it says, During those days in Mark chapter 8, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on these people. Now, th there's a nice analogy here or a comparison or um, metaphor, I guess what you want to say. What really bothers Jesus here is the lack of feeding of food because these people have been following him. It's also a hunger for the word of God. America and the world today is starting to see that more and more. People have departed from the word of God, but now you see people returning. To the Word of God. We've followed fads. We've followed all kinds of different teachings, philosophers, uh, since the awakening and all that stuff. We've gotten away from God, and now you see people coming back to God. Well, this is where we have truth. This is where we have hope, and could you imagine a world that operated under the Word of God, where people love God and love each other and care for each other and look out for each other, put other people first, they were honest. They didn't kill. They didn't steal. They honored their parents. Can you imagine? It'd be an amazing world. That's what God intended. That's what God would like for us to have in time. But we don't have that. And so Jesus is upset. He's got compassion for these people. They're hungry. They've been following him. He wants to feed them. And it's more than just feeding him the, the word of God. Excuse me, feeding them their physical bodies. It's also feeding them and us to this day, the application to this day, the word of God. He says, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days. Isn't it interesting that it was three days? Three is a number of completion, just like the number seven, which is like the number of perfection. Um, he used these. How many days was he in uh, the, the, the ground after his crucifixion? Three days. How many are in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Three. The number of three is very important. Uh, a strand of rope with three cords is not easily broken and so on and so forth. So I have compassion for these people. They've all been, already been with me three days. They have nothing to eat. Again, let's remember and keep in the back of our minds that it's feeding our physical body as well as feeding our spiritual body through the Word of God. And Jesus is the bread of life. Uh, you can see that in John. Uh, if I send them home hungry, he says, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a very long distance. His disciples answered, but where in this remote place can anyone get bread to feed them? Now here I like this question. I've talked about this before. When you have an issue and when you're coming to God and saying, God, please use me. I don't have much. Maybe you have millions. If you do, fantastic. I don't have much, but I can sing. I can work. I have good arms. I have good legs. I have a good mind. I have uh, the ability to speak. I'm very social. I'm very analytical. And I just like this because Jesus doesn't say, well, you, you need to figure this out. And you need to have every possible solution to this problem. He does not say that. Please remember this. Bring me what you have. Every person is an individual. Every person has some unique ability or talent, no matter what that may be. He says, bring me that. Bring me that unique thing that I blessed you with from creation. Because before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I called you and I gave you a purpose. Bring me what you have. And just an illustration, I would say this. Maybe it's not the best illustration. But there's an illustration of a young man that goes to McDonald's with his dad. 
And his dad um, says, would you like some French fries? And the young man's like, yeah. So they both get a large fry. They sit down to, uh, they sit down to eat. And then all of a sudden, the dad eats all his fries. So he looks at the son. The son's got plenty of fries. And he reaches over to grab one. And the son slaps his hand and says, no, 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 no. These are my fries. And the father starts to think, but I, I bought those fries for you. You're not going to share them with me? Uh, I could buy you 10 boxes of fries if you want. I just wanted a couple more to finish my sandwich. And this is how we are with God. He gives us these French fries, and for lack of a better word, he gives us these talents, and we're like, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use them for your glory. I'm not gonna share them with you. And we do that. And he's not, he's just saying, bring me what I've given you, bring me what you have, and let me use you. Let me use that ability in some capacity for my kingdom. And I thought about that, just a personal note. Can you imagine if the Katy Perry's and the Beyonce's and all those people sang to the glory of God? What a revival. Taylor Swift and all them, what if they really poured their heart into the gospel? What if they sang gospel music instead of rock music and all that stuff that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being famous and wealthy and popular, but imagine if they use that singing voice and that talent that they have to write songs for the glory of God. Instead, they use it for themselves. So, you know, it's great, good for them, but uh, I would just say, what, what kind of world do we have if the most talented people use their talents for God? And this is what Jesus is saying. I'm not asking you to go get all this bread. I'm saying, bring me what you have. Each individual, bring me what you have, what talent you have, what ability you have. And let's see what Jesus can do with that. So he says, how many do you have? Seven, they replied. Again, the number of perfection. Well, in Jesus' mind, in God's mind, that's perfect. That's God's number. That's perfection. And he told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves, he gave thanks. He always prays, as we should, over every meal for anything that we have. Just uh, thank you, God, for what we have. Thank you for receiving this food, uh, and so on. And, and so he took the seven loaves, gave thanks, and he broke them. He's going to break the word. He's going to divide the word. He's going to pass it out and multiply it amongst the people. And he does that through pastors and preachers and priests. By the way, everybody in Christ is a believer priest and an ambassador in Christ Jesus as they become new creations. So everybody is tasked with the uh, task of spreading the bread, spreading the word of God. And so he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. This is what he does. I am the bread of life. Jesus gives of, uh, of him to us, and we're supposed to spread the word of God about Jesus Christ, because he is the bread of life. He broke it, he gave it to the disciples, and we have the privilege to pass it out to the people. And they did so. They had a few small fish as well, and he gave thanks for them, and he told the disciples, distribute them as well. So here it is again, distributing the word, distributing the gifts that you have for the glory of God. The people ate, and once again, as in the feeding of the 5,000, they were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls. Now, if you look at the words here, both these baskets from the feeding of the 5,000 are different. The baskets in the feeding of the 5,000 were kind of smaller baskets for carrying a small meal or a small lunch. These seven basketfuls, if you look up the word, uh, they're bigger. They're a provisional type flexible basket. And the word here is uh, spuris. Spuris is the word. The basket word in the feeding of the 5,000 is kafinos, kafinos, K-O-P-H-I-N-O-S. And the basket word here is S-P-U-R-I-S. So there's a difference between the baskets. There were 12 baskets full at the feeding of the 5,000, one for each of the disciples. And then here in the feeding of the 4,000, there's seven baskets full, but they're larger baskets, the number again of perfection, and there's plenty. Plenty for the disciples, plenty for Christ, and everybody has eaten and they are satisfied. In this world, if you want satisfaction, if you want to be satisfied, getting more of God is the best way to get it. Everybody has, you can have all the things in the world and they'll make you happy. Again, Matthew Perry said that before he committed suicide, before he died, whatever that happened there with the drugs and all that. He always said that um, he loved his fame. It was fun. And he loved building his big house. It was fantastic. And he said it was fantastic for about six months. And then he realized, now what? And that's what happens with a lot of people that become successful. What do I do now? The satisfaction is to fill the void in our heart that God has created every man with. And to fill that with the word of God and knowledge 
and a relationship with God. And then you become content. You become satisfied. One of the things that uh, I get accused of, and I think people, I'm very content. I don't get jealous of people that are successful. I don't get awestruck when I see famous people. I'm content. I'm Rob. I'm pretty happy. God's been good to me. I got some great friends. Served my country. I loved it. And I had the privilege of serving with some amazing people. And I just see what's God going to do with me next. Again, I'm not here to build kingdoms or empires. But I'm, I love being able to preach the word and talk to one person at a time. I'm very content in that. I don't need a bunch of stuff. I'm very happy. I have beautiful children, beautiful wife. So, you know, hey, we can find contentment with what we have. So, that, that does, that's a lot. These people were satisfied. They were content that they were filled by the bread that God had given them. And they were full and there was enough to feed the disciples with seven baskets full afterwards. They were left over. So there were about 4,000 men present. And I wanted to just point out that in Matthew 15, it says, Matthew 15, 38, the number of those who ate was 4,000 men besides women and children. He points that out again, just like he did uh, with the other one, besides women and children in Matthew 14, uh, 21. So uh, Matthew points that out, Mark does not. So I just wanted to point that out there. So then uh, they picked up the seven baskets full. There was enough for everybody to eat. About 4,000 men were present. According to Matthew, there was 4,000 men plus women and children. And uh, having uh, then he sent them away. After they ate, he sent them away after they were satisfied. They were filled. They were full. And that's the way you should go home from church every Sunday. If your pastor's doing his job, your Sunday school teacher's doing his job, if you're a teacher and you're doing your job, the people should go home satisfied. Man, I went to church today. I learned something amazing. It was good. Now, you can't always knock one out of the park, but you can always give somebody something that benefits them for the week or for some type of application to their life. It doesn't have to be a grand slam. It just has to be something that they can feed on during the week. And so... Uh, basically, they, they took up the, the baskets. He sent the people away, and he gets in a boat again. Here we go for all you boaters out there. Jesus jumps in a boat. I love it. He got in the boat, and with his disciples, he went to the region of Dalmanutha. Um, Matthew says uh, a different... It's I think these are two places right next to each other. I, um, I'm not sure, but he says they go to Magadan, M-A-G-A-D-A-N, and there, these are two regions next to each other on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. So they went from the east. They're on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, Mark says they went to Dalmanutha. Matthew says they went to Magadan. So two places very similar, very near each other. And then the Pharisees came and began. Here they come. Here comes the guys, the religious guys, the judges, and the, uh, all the people that want to put them under a microscope. The Pharisees came and began to question uh, Jesus to test him. They ask him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply. This grieves Christ. Man, I just fed, you know, 5,000 people, 4,000 people, 20,000 people. I just fed them with this small thing. What else do you need? They don't care. They're just trying to pick him apart. I just don't like him. They find him threatening. And he asked them, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighs deeply. He groans in his heart and in his soul. Why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth, no sign will be given to it. Now, what we'll find out is that the sign that he will refer to, and I wrote this down here, it's in Luke 11 and Matthew 16. The sign that will be given to them is the sign of Jonah, and that is that as G Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so Christ will be in the belly of the earth for three days, and then he will rise again like Jonah came out of the fish, Jesus came out of the grave. He defeated death. And that's the sign that will be given. He doesn't give them a sign here. But Matthew, uh, again, Matthew 16 and Luke 11 continue this portion and say that the sign that will be given will be the sign of Jonah. Mark skips right over that for some reason. I don't know why. But why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth. No sign will be given to it. Then he, The sign's already been given. He's already said who he is. He's already, uh, you know, walked on water, calmed the storm, healed the sick, proven that from Isaiah 35, he is the Messiah that would come heal the, the blind, the lame, the deaf, and all those. I tell you the truth, no sign will be given. Then he left them to go back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. So that's where we'll stop today. Mark chapter 8, uh, that's verses 1 through 13. We'll pick up on verse 14 tomorrow. But just uh, remember... 
I, just one thought. Bring God what you have. You don't have to be a rock star. You don't have to be six foot seven. You don't have to bench 500 pounds. You could come in at five foot two. That's my daughter. Five foot five. Just be a person that's sincere with Christ Jesus. Say, this is all I got. I'm a nice guy. And I'd like to help God. What can I do? Or somebody could come in and say, uh, I'm an athlete. Um, can I bring my talents as an athlete and use them for your glory? I think uh, TJ Shroud up in Ohio State is uh, preaching the gospel. Tim, Tim Tebow preaching the gospel. Um, all these men, guys that I work with in the Ranger Battalion and Special Forces, you know, preaching the gospel. Jeff Strucker. Um, I don't know everybody, but there's some other guys like me out there with our background that are preaching the gospel. I don't have much. I'm a grunt. <laughs> I'm a blockhead. I'm not a really intelligent guy. I'm a guy that would like kicking down doors and doing crazy stuff, jumping out of airplanes. But I'm not the brightest, but I do love Jesus Christ. And what I do have, I give freely to everybody else. And that is that I love Christ, and I hope I can help you along the way as you want to learn more about your Savior. So that's what we'll study today. Bring what you have to Christ. He can do a lot with uh, a lot more than what we could ever do with withhold, withholding it from him. If we give it to him, he can do much more. So that's uh, Mark chapter 8 verses 1 again through 13 and tomorrow we'll start on verse 14 mark chapter 8 have a great day